advantage that OpenAI has, which is the advantage that any, call it emerging, you know, advantage competitor has. Outsider. Is, yeah, outsider, is that the incumbents are handicapped by their current scale. Much of the consideration set that Google has had in deciding what features and tools to launch with respect to AI over the last couple of years has been driven fundamentally by a concern about public policy and public reaction. And I know this from speaking to folks there that are close enough to, to kind of indicate, like, Google has been so targeted, has been such the point of attack by governments around the world with respect to their scale and monopoly and mon monopolistic kind of behavior, as some people have framed it, privacy concerns, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The fines in the EU are extraordinary. That so much of what goes on at Google today is, can I get approval to do this? And so many people have felt so frustrated that they can't actually unleash the toolkit that Google has built. And so they've been harnessed and focused on these internal capabilities. I think I mentioned this in the past, but things like, what's the right video to show on YouTube to keep people engaged? What's the right ad to show to increase click-through rates, et cetera, et cetera, versus building great consumer products for fear of the backlash that would arise and governments coming down on them and ultimately, and ultimately attacking the, the, the revenue and the core revenue stream. And this is no different than any other kind of innovative dilemma. You know, any other business of scale in any other industry historically ultimately gets disrupted because their job at that point is to protect their cash flow and their revenue stream and their balance and their assets, not to disrupt themselves, especially as a public company, especially under the scrutiny and the watchful eye of governments and regulators. So I think Google has, in aggregate, probably good competitive talent, if not better talent than OpenAI and others. Google has arguably the best corpus of data upon which to train, the best capabilities, the best toolkit, the best hardware, user the based. lowest cost for running these sorts of models, the lowest cost for serving them, et cetera, et cetera. So frankly, they're way behind. The battle is theirs to lose if they are willing to disrupt themselves. And this is the moment that Larry and Sergey should wield those founder shares that they have. And they should wield the comments that they wrote in that founder's letter, that they will always make the right decision for the long term for this company, even if it means taking a cost in the short term and disrupting themselves. This is the moment to prove that those founder shares were worth you know, the, the negotiation to get there. And, and I think that it is going to require a real degree of scrutiny, a real degree of regulatory uncertainty, a real degree of challenge by governments and public policy people, and perhaps even a revenue hit in the near term to realize the opportunity. But I do think that they're better equipped to win if they chose to. Well said. Well, really well said. And I think the founder share insight is particularly interesting, Sachs. The fact that By they the way, fought sorry. for those and did it's, nothing with them. Go ahead, Jamal. Yeah, no, no, I was just going to say the exact same thing. It's like, if they don't use it now, when? what would it take and when? Yeah, and, they should and, just go and yet in another, there. yet another case of the emperor has no clothes. Just a power grab by Silicon Valley execs, which was meaningless. Because if in this moment you don't wield that power and break that company into bits as you need to, what was the point of having it? Yeah, they need to come in and say, we're going to give barred results to 10% of users guys, and ask them to me, get feedback on it. Because who has me, more let, queries than, just one point I want to make there for Freeberg, yeah, yeah. who has more reinforcement learning than Google? That search no box is no everywhere one. and people write and question Gmail. after question and Gmail. And, and Google Docs, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they yeah. have so many and people YouTube. asking questions YouTube. and YouTube yeah. might be the the transcripts the, of YouTube the transcript alone. of every video and the image of every video. Bananas. Yeah. And the comments yeah, under it. You know the comments under the video and you have the transcript of what happened in this video and then what was the question and answer underneath it. Let me make the counterpoint. Please. To my own point, like look at how Gerstner came after Zuck. So Zuck had his point of view, his strongly held belief that AR, VR was the future of the platform. That's what he wanted to bet into. That's what he wanted to lean into. It's what he wanted to build the company against. He did it and then the financial analysts and the investors came at him and said, this is a waste of money, focus on making money, you have a responsibility to shareholders, F those founders shares, you don't deserve that 10x voting right, or whatever the framing might have been to get him to say, you know what, I acquiesce, I'm giving it up. And I think that we should also think about what's going to happen on the other side. Google is a trillion plus dollar market cap company. They are, their shares are owned by every public endowment, public pension fund, institutional investor owns Google in their portfolio. So the backlash against Google making a hard bet like this and potentially destroying billions of dollars of cash flow in the process every year 
will not be easy to do that the same sorts of letters that Gerstner at all and obviously we love Gerstner and you know, we can all defend him all day long at Zuck is what might may end up happening with with Alphabet if they did choose to go this path. Sachs, what do you think here about the founder share specifically and Google's chances of disrupting themselves and, you know, just putting this into every product and shoving it down users' throats uh, and catching up? Well, I mean, with all due respect to Larry and Sergey, I mean, they've been on the beach a long time. That's this a lot of beach me, time. This is, reminds me of uh, Apollo Creed coming out of retirement in uh, Rocky IV. <laughs> <laughs> in a lot of shape. In a lot of shape. <laughs> A lot of a lot of fanfare, but they could be a little out of shape. Sam yeah. Altman may not look like Ivan Drago, but but this this is one shrewd character. He's fit. This is one shrewd character. Yeah. I mean, Altman is fit. Oof, he's fit. He's been in the arena. Yeah, yeah he's he, you know he's a multi time founder who sat at the top of YC and got to see everything that worked. Yep, and got to see all Brilliant the research, strategist. and he's been plugging away at this for what like yep. eight years. So yep. there's a there's a big I just think there's a big gap to catch up on. Now, Google has all the resources in the world and they've got a lot of proprietary assets too and they've got all the incentive in the world. So do I think that Google will be one of the top 4 players in AI? Absolutely. But this idea that it's going to come and steamroll open AI, I'm I not have buying a prediction. It. I got a prediction. Within next year, Larry and Sergey take the title of co-CEOs and then they oh, do stop. a demo day where the two stop. of them get on stop. stage Stop. And they actually do the demos Jacob, of these products. Just, if just that stop. happens, that's fictional gonna, pontification. Stop. That's it. That's listen. And Bezos is going to run for president. Those are my two yeah. predictions. Stop. I'm taking a lot of predictions. Can you imagine if Larry Freeberg? Where are the chances of Larry and Sergey taking co CEO slots? That's prediction one. And then prediction two. What are the chances of them running the next Google I/O where they get on stage and they walk people through all the products that they shepherded and that they have a vested interest in and that they're they want to demo. There is an institutional problem at Google at the top level, which does need to be solved, which is this position of constantly being in defense against the scrutiny, again, of regulators and public policy folks and, and you know, all these different groups that are against Google. And so as a result, the, the kind of cultural seasoning, particularly at the executive and the board level, has been one of like, you know, protect the nest, don't overreach, don't overstep. And it's a real, you know, I think one for the for the business school books or whatever, uh, ultimately is what they end up doing about it, because now is, uh, you know, the time when that defensive posture is really kind of putting the, the entire business at risk. The same thing happened to Microsoft, remember, in the late 90s? That's right. When they got crushed by that antitrust lawsuit, the it the made them decree. very defensive. Well, the, no, but that consent decree, they, they put a, they had a wartime CEO come in, Balmer came in and, you know, followed by kind of an innovative guy who could kind of continue to build. And I think that there may be a moment here. I, look, I love Sundar. He, he's, a, he's a great guy, great CEO. Sundar and I, I don't know if I, if I ever told you this, he and I started at Google on the same day. We we're both in the same Nugler class. We wore the freaking hat on the TGIF day and on stage. He was a product manager and now he runs the company. But I think the question is like, how, whether it's the CEO or the broader whole kind of executive org or the board, a degree of disruption necessary to shift that cultural seasoning is so necessary right now. For them to have a shot at this and similar to what you just said sax like you're going to need a bomber type moment to kind of you know reinvigorate that business and by the way i'll more tell of a you Sacha moment i think than a, more of a, yeah. Than a well bomber. yeah because it, it's an important port point when bomber took over during that period after gates when they were on their heels he basically just focused on revenue and paying dividends and stock buybacks and the stock went sideways right. and right. he missed mobile and now yeah, it's missing, a good point, Jacob. Yeah. You know, well, wait, you're, you're forgetting one big thing, which is that that was also because he had to operate under a consent decree to the DOJ. Exactly. So the product managers of Microsoft were replaced with lawyers from the Department of Justice, and you had to get their sign off before you could ship anything. So we have to remember that those things probably slowed Microsoft down as well. And the great thing that Satya had was a blank slate and the removal of that consent decree. So he was able to do everything that just made a lot of sense. 